Hi, Kathy here from Kathy's Cute Creations. Today I'm going to show you how to make a pin cushion. It's going to be based on this one here that I made for my swap partner, Sylvia, and my sister. And I made this one for myself. This is pretty good size. It's 10 inches. And you can see that it's a bit fluffy there. My daughter wanted this one, which is less fluffy, but it's got more stuffing in it, or more beads in it, not stuffing. So it's heavier. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it a little bit smaller, but I am going to show you, I mean, I'll explain how I made this one, but I also will show you the new one I'm making, which is going to be using steel wool that I made in this one for the petals. So let me show you here on the table what I've got and what I use. So in case you want to make one Now too. looking at these two, you can see that this one is higher than this one. Okay. They've got the same thing on the back here. And now I'm going to show you what I use because this is a little bit of a stiff back. The fabric is 100% cotton, but it's stiff. So you can tell that's a little bit stiff. And I'm going to show you what I put in here on this fabric to use it. And then I'll show you the steel wool and everything I use. It's the flexible adhesive. It's super fine and you can get whatever. And I got this at Walmart. It looks like this. Just like if you were to buy it to use for your dishes. It comes in, it's rolled up. Let me take it out here. And then I unrolled it like this before I put it in the flowers. I cut it with the regular scissors. As you can see, it's got a cut right there. That's just my scissors, and that actually helps sharpen your scissors a bit. Let's put that aside. And then this is the, and it's one sided fusible now. And I got it at either, I either got it at Joann's or I got it online because I got like a bolt of it. And it's 801 Pellin for crafts and home decor. It's a stabilizer. That's all it is. And it is strong enough, this is, to make the back fabric a little stiffer so that it will sit up and it wouldn't be flimsy on the bottom of the pin cushion. Now, this time around, I'm going to do this little B right here. So this is one of those little topper things. That's his little wings. That's what he looks like. Now I'll cut this label off. Just use your regular scissors to cut it off. When you cut it, you want to make sure that you go close to the fabric, but you do not want to cut your fabric. Now you can snip. I mean, I don't snip. I just go ahead and cut it off just like this. That's it. Because he's got enough fluffiness it'll hide and that's at the bottom anyway okay so that's what I do I prepare him set him aside now I went ahead and I cut out the shape of um, the fabric that I got in the creative notions this last fabric you might recognize it here it's a little bees I put my Pellin 808 on the back of it this is gonna be the bottom piece of my fabric I just cut this out so that it would be like a honeycomb because the top part, and normally I don't do this, but I did it this time. It's two fabrics. It's the honeycomb yellow. And then I went ahead and took this because it's got the bees on it. And when you put them back to back, it looks like there's bees down underneath the hives, which is what you would see in a regular beehive. They're down there busy working. That's those two. Then I took a piece of, this is just my batting, and this is 100% batting. And it's just a scrap. It's a, then I took a piece of fabric, which is 100% cotton. This is for the, now you won't see this. This is the part that's gonna be inside because you've got your batting and you have your fabric on top of it. This is your sandwich because we're going to quilt this. Then I will have to show you for an example and then in my case, I have another piece of fabric. Now, the reason for this, let me explain it to you before I do when it. When I did this project, I went ahead and I cut out these shapes, just like I've cut this shape out here for the honeycomb. I went ahead and I quilted this part, which is what I'm going to do here on the honeycomb since I can't show you this because I've put it together. So then what I did after that was, I took the back of it. Now I went ahead and I cut this shape and out. you're going to want to sew another piece of fabric on top of it, 
which is what I will do. I'm going to show you this step so that, you know, hearing somebody explain it and actually seeing it are two different things. And some of you might be visual or you've got to actually see it. Then I would sew this uh, just on the outer set, attach it to the honeycomb. Then you're going to cut this fabric and you're going to put your steel wool in it. That's what I'm going to show you. Now, you don't have to quilt this if you don't want. I mean, it's still going to be nice and have a little fluffy in it. You don't need to quilt it. You could, I um, mean, you can do straight line quilting. Put your um, foot on and just go straight. You can do it with a walking foot or your regular foot. If you do it with your regular foot, I would start in the middle. I would start at one end and I would go straight across. Then I would come over, however much you want, one inch, half inch, two inches, and go the other direction. Then I'd go back over here to the other side and come down. This way your fabric won't shift on you. Before you do any kind of quilting, <clears throat> you want to make a sample. The reason being, you want to make sure that you have your feed dogs down. You'll know it if you accidentally forgot, which can happen. You also want to make sure that your tension is correct, and this is how you're going to find out whether your tension is correct or not, because it may need a little bit of adjustment. So you make the same kind of sandwich that you're going to be using. I've got the same kind of batting, and this fabric's a little bit thicker than the one I'm using, so it'll be all right. And I've got my machine set up. And the first thing that you want to do is you want to bring your bottom thread up so that you do not get a bird's nest or any kind of tangling. So you put your foot down, put your needle down. If you have a needle down, needle up. And then just bring it up. The bottom thread should come up if you pull a little bit on your top thread. So my bottom has come up. I'm going to use this right here to grab it. Pull it up because I want to hold on to it. And then I'm going to put my needle back down in my fabric because I'm going to lock in my stitches by going in that same spot a couple of times. It will not create any kind of nest or anything. It's not going to be pulling your bottom thread up. It just goes up and down the same spot before I move. Now I check that my tension is correct. My needle is going in the middle. I could have made it go to the left or the right if I wanted to and uh, based on the width on my machine and then the length is just uh, zero because I don't want it to make any kind of length so I have to guide this and on my machine the foot here actually has a height adjustment so I pretty well leave it because the height adjustment for my regular sewing versus my freehand sewing is the same thing if for some reason it started pulling or something then I would adjust it so then I just start moving my fabric and I'm just doing a little wiggle worm here just so I can look at the back and I stop flip it over and take a look at it nothing is pulled there's no stitches pulled they're all the same length the tension is correct so now I know that I can go on to my project let me take this out and I'm gonna bring it up here to the camera so you can see a little bit better so this is the front part there you go. I did that little squiggles, and then when you flip it over to the back, that's what it looks like. There you go. And isn't that pretty? And here's what the back looks like. Not perfect, but I like it. And nobody's going to see the back, so even if your back isn't perfect, don't worry about it. Only the front's going to be seen. Now let me cut it. Since I've decided to put my bee right here in the middle, I don't want to put the steel wool where I'm going to put the bee through. So what I'm going to do, this is my, here's my finished quilting. Here's my extra piece of fabric that I'm putting on it now. I'm going to just lay it in the middle because remember we'll cut that off anyway. Then I'm going to go ahead and while I still have my foot on from my embroidery, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go around a couple of honeycombs that I that are about in the middle. So this is my middle section right here that I'm going to put the bee on. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to stitch this fabric down to this so then I can't get the steel wool to come up against the bee. It'll be easier for me to sew the bee on there. So I'm just going to be doing a good size area that my bee is on and I'm doing the same thing I'm pulling up my thread I 
and just like when I was doing the quilting part I'm gonna lock it into place put little spots here and then I'm gonna just go ahead and go around just put me an area here off my threads and I'll flip it over here to the back so you can take a look at it so that's what I did right there so my B will go there and now I'm gonna go ahead and change this foot out because I want to put my regular foot back on yeah. and then all I'm gonna do is go around it just like this go right on the outer edge of it change my foot back on my um, my setting on this machine not my foot because my foot is back but it needs a setting on it so I'm going to try to go right on the edge of this okay and I'm just going to sew along the edge here that need to be perfect I'm just trying to attach this one piece of fabric to this other fabric leave a piece I was thinking about leaving it open but that won't work I gotta show you how to do it if you were to do the applique on there now normally what I would do with something like this but I'm trying to show you something so I'm not gonna leave it like this but if this is all you were doing and you were gonna put your steel wool in you would just leave an opening and stick your stool, steel wool in. But I'm going to show you based on that flower because that's what you're trying to figure out. What if you put the flower petals on your, um, your top? And if anybody's ever that's on here has ever done trupunto, that's what this is like with the cutting of the fabric. I want to go back one. There we go. Let me just go over the top of it. Okay. Now, I don't need to be cutting this off. That's not necessary. You're going to flip it upside down and let me switch here so you can see this easier. Now, get yourself a sharp pair of scissors. Grab this fabric away from the quilted fabric like I've got it pinched right here in my hand and then you're gonna snip on it and that's all I did was I snipped it all right now and I'm gonna go this way and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna stuff your steel wool and make it as thick as you want. I don't need mine that thick. And I'm going to take it in pieces, actually. And it is going to be messy. You might as well know it right off the bat. I'm going to go as far as I can. And I might have to make another slit over there. And you can see how it's getting a little bit fluffy there. And you can cut it to shape. Whatever. I just cut it in sections. I'll put some right over here. Make sure y'all can see all that. Yep. Like that. Let's see if I can get it in that corner right there. My finger. There we go. Let's 
Let's see what I can get on the other side over there. piece right here just take it put it like this like that I'm just gonna fill up this area right here just like that and then I'm going to have to cut it right here. And so we'll grab it again. Just like that. piece up right here. And we're going to match it up here in the corner. And you can use a um, stiletto, wooden plastic, if you think you need to. If you don't think you can get your hands in there. What I do is I go ahead and I sew this and I don't make it perfect or anything. Just Let me go ahead and I started at the bottom and it looks like uh, shoestrings being tied. Just go in. You don't need to overlap the fabric or anything. All I'm doing is just catching the fabric with the thread. I'm not making it tight. It's just keeping your steel wool in. That's all it's doing. That's it. Then when I get done, I'll show you how to put it together. And now that that's all finished, and you can see it's got a little puffiness there. So when you put your pin in, your and every time you stab it in there, in, in this case, in my pin cushion, it's actually sharpening. You might not be able to hear it on online here. But that's hitting that steel wool. Okay, now the next step is to put the B on there and I'm actually going to cut the ribbon off because I don't need the ribbon. It's not necessary because actually I'm going to use the B to sew it on and now I'm going to get some yellow thread. First I put a double knot in my thread and then I'm going to go ahead and thread it on him first because that's where my knot's going to be. All righty. So I'm going to put it about right here. So all I got to do is go down in my fabric. Now keeping in mind, my fabric's pretty thick because of the way I did it with the two fabrics because I wanted the B in the back. Yours won't be as thick. And then when you, I've grabbed it, put it, put it in that spot. He's holding on, it's pretty good. I figure out where I wanna put it. Do I wanna go this way with it? Do I wanna go this way? So this looks like it's pretty good like that. So then what I do now 
is I'll go ahead and right where I put him the first time, as soon as I get it untangled off my finger, I make a little loop here. This is in the fabric now. This is not going through the bee. It's just to stabilize it because what I want to do now is I want to get the back side so that it's down also. So the back side's about right here. So let me go ahead and get it in my fabric like this. Now this is all on the inside so you don't see it. Then I'm going to go up through here because I want to grab my bee now on her tail end. And as soon as I get it, I'm going to show you. Okay. So this is what I did. I grabbed the bee back here. So got him here, so push it through. And then it holds on to it. And then I'm going to go right back in this, right close to the same spot, right here. So it makes a real tight fit on the pin cushion. Grab it and pull it. And try not to get your threads all knotted up. Let's see if I can get it here. There we go. And it looks like this. And then you're going to pull this real tight. See how he's... Whoops. There he is. And then you pull this real tight and it holds onto the bee. Okay? I mean, I don't care that he flops around like that, but he's not getting off the pin cushion. So you make it a little bit snug. Make the first piece snug. Let's see if I can... Because we're going to go back over both these pieces and make them snug. So first I'm going to do the back side and I'm going to do a couple loops to make him stay put. Let's see if I can show it to you. So yeah. It's pretty snug right there. You can barely see it. I gotta keep getting out of the darned old camera here. And then you just go back in that same spot. You're coming up in the same area. And you're just looping it a couple times, which is making it tight, which keeps him on that fabric, see? And that's all you do for the top part and the back. Let me do that real quick. So I got him all sewed on. There he is. Now we take, and I'm gonna trim around the edge of this so I can put my other piece next to it. Doesn't need to be perfect. Just trim off the excess. Alright, now take this here, this is the back piece, and you're going to match it up, and now you want to sew this to this, and then when we get done sewing it, so make sure that you come a quarter inch, not from the piece you've just cut off, but from your, pap, your uh, top part of your pin cushion, come a quarter inch in because we're going to use the pinking shears to cut all the way around it when we're finished. So this is just a plain old straight stitch. If you want to start out basting it because you feel like it's too thick to do it, that's fine. You can do that. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to baste it on about a length four and then decrease it and see how it goes. So let me get my sewing machine over here set up. And if you'd like to use a walking foot, you can use a walking foot also. All I've done is I've increased my length to four. And this is the same needle I've been using all along. It's a 12 inch needle. If you want to pin the bottom to the top, I'm actually going to, um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put clips. I know it will stay put until I get around to the corner here. So I'm just putting one on each corner like this because I'm matching up my bottom fabric. Remember, this is where you're going to need to leave a hole for your stuffing. So I'm going to leave one whole entire side and sew it up when I'm done. As a matter of fact, I'm going to put these two yellows and I'm going to do this so I know not to come across that edge right there. And then, whoops, all I got to do is start on this corner here. So let me move that down a little bit. 
And um, on my foot, I have, instead of coming in a quarter of an inch, well, I guess I could, let's see. So I just need to go right on the rim of this piece of plastic here, and that's my distance automatically without marking it. But if you've got to mark it with a pencil or something, that's fine. Go ahead and mark it. Okay, and like I said, I'm doing four, so it goes across it pretty easy. And even though it's going through that steel wool, that steel wool is not going to break your needle. Remember, if anything, it's going to be sharpening it as you go. If you've got any little nicks on your needle, it's going to help get rid of them. If I need to go a one more, I think, here. There we go. And you know, if you get done with it and you feel like you don't have enough space to clip with your um, scissors, your pinking shears, you can make it a little bit bigger. Because nothing says you can't go in another distance from the first stitching that you just did. You can, I think that might be too much. You can always go and make your stitching bigger. It's starting out by making it small that it has an issue. Oops. I need to go back. Okay, I just, there we go. Start over here. And that's, this is the end with all these clips that I stop at. That's my opening. So I know when I get down to here, I stop. And then I'll know whether I need to go in further or not. Let's see here in a second. Just locking it in place. Take a look at it. to see if I got enough to cut it off. I think I want to go in a little bit further actually. Make it a little bit smaller. So I'm going to go in right there. Let's back stitch it here. Right. I think that's where I got it. Yep, that's where I got to turn. went too far so I gotta back it up once I keep forgetting I just adjusted my foot so I wouldn't have to do all that lifting I have an automatic lift on my foot here it's one of the options okay that looks good and nope too far let's go back one space okay that looks good Lock it in the place when we get down here. All right. Now here's the hole for the stuffing. Let me show you. Back up a little bit here. All righty. So that's where I'm going to put the stuffing. Here's the poly pellets that I use. I've got some in a glass already. So I put that in first. So let's just put a little bit in there. Okay. And then I will put the silky here. Soft and silk, silk, silk soft, excuse me. And I get this at Joann's. I usually buy it when it's on sale, half off. It's super duper soft. And then just slowly put it in here. Because all you're trying to do is stuff it. I mean, it's not going to take much for mine to be stuffed because it's little. But if you were using a bigger one, it would. But you want to make sure you get it all in the, in the corners. So what I'll do is I have a wooden dowel over here. And then I'll shove it down in the corners. Shove it in there. And the pellets, see, they'll move around. So you can manipulate them 
as you're shoving this in. Now here I can get my thumb down in there quite a bit. There we go. Now I'll just make it as thick as I want or as thin. So let's take a look at it here. And you can tell that this is really stiff, this bottom side. See that? But by putting those pellets in first, you won't have to worry about sewing over here when you get to the top of your pin cushion. Now I think that's a pretty good pin cushion. Let's make it a little bit thicker because I like height on it. Oh yeah, that's looking really nice. Okay. I'll put a little bit more right here on the edge. And I can kind of shove it in and then turn around and pull it. Even though once it's sewn, you can still manipulate it a little bit. So there we go. Make sure none of the poly pellets are up here. We don't want to be sewing those things. Okay. Looks pretty good. Now I'll just go over here to the sewing machine and I'll just sew that right there. I'll get a couple clips on it. Take it over here and we're going to sew it. Let me turn the camera I'm around. I'm hoping you can see this because this is on the front part and I don't really get to see it. Let's go here, right on the edge. And then when I get up a little bit from my cutting, I'll lock it into place because you know I'm going to be cutting off this thing here pretty soon. So, there we go. I'm washing my bee, gotta shut him down a little bit. Kink right there. There we go. Well, that should be good enough. So the very last step that you do is take your pinking shears, and I'm going to hold it so I can pay attention to what I'm cutting. And I'm just cutting the edge of my sewing. I mean, my cutting area off. And I'll show it here right after I get done with there. Now see how you can just barely see that stitch? This is the actual stitch, the one that's closest to the, to the body of the pincushion. But it's okay if I see this other stitch. I don't have a problem with that. That's just like double stitching. And I'm Because I just want to take just the edge off. Just to make it pretty, that's all I'm doing. And then go all the way around the whole thing. Like I said, just take the very edge off, just for decorating purposes, I mean, just to make it look nice. And here's my last edge. There we have it. There's my pin cushion. There's my little pin cushion. There it is. Let's try it out with some pins. Oh yeah, that is very nice. There you go. And I can feel it tug a little bit when I put those pins in, so that's a good thing. So that's how you make a pin cushion. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Give it a thumbs up if you did. Subscribe if you haven't yet. And I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye, everybody.